Hello, today I will talk about different components that are used in RC cars and how you can use those components to repair your RC cars and make them even more powerful. In my previous videos I showed how you can make your own component to improve power in your car using diodes and uh, relays, but this method will be easier but a little bit more expensive. In regular cheap RC cars you can see this kind of circuits. And these RC circuits already include everything you need for your RC car. The circuit would control the electrical motor that moves your car forward and in reverse direction and also will control the steering mechanism on your RC car. And if something breaks in the circuit, you'll have to throw it away. So this is a receiver and a controller in one. So today I will talk about an alternative this alternative will be more expensive, but it can provide you with more options for your car. You may change the power on your RC car, you may replace broken components on RC cars. So this one thing can be replaced by receiver that works with a remote control. And uh, an electronic speed controller. So let me show you how these components work. The electronic speed controller usually picks up power from the battery. In this case, these cables. These cables may have different connectors or plugs. I've already replaced them to apply it on my RC car with other connectors. In this case, these are speed connectors. And then after picking up the electricity from the battery, this unit provides electricity to power up the receiver. The receiver has to be powered up. Usually the receiver is marked and you can see where the power should go. And usually the uh, red cable is plus and black cable is minus. So you would plug this cable into the receiver. And the third cable would be responsible for sending a signal from the remote control to the unit to let the unit know if the electrical motor should be turned on in a certain direction. Once you power this receiver, it will provide power to all pins that it has. This receiver can be of several channels. Each section here is one channel. Usually the first two are responsible for moving steering mechanisms and the electrical motor responsible for moving the car. You can play around with where you want to plug the cables in. You can plug in here two electronic speed controller depending on what you want to do or one and then you will probably plug into a servo motor which will be moving your steering mechanism. In the instructions for each receiver and remote control you would know which channel is responsible for which function. Let me demonstrate you now by connecting this unit to the battery how it will work. So this unit according to its characteristics can function with different voltage and uh, it means that I can actually connect different batteries to this unit without burning it. Why it's important? Because sometimes I want to increase power on my RC toys, RC cars, or maybe I will make a boat and use this unit in a boat and I want to go with fast. So this unit will work equally with the 7.4 voltage and 11.1 um, voltage batteries. So let me connect it to one of the batteries. You should connect the unit correctly considering the negative and positive cables. If you connect them in reverse you will burn the unit, it, it says in the instructions. Some units may have protection against that, but this one doesn't, because it's a ch the cheapest one. So now it's connected and uh, we have a uh, also switch here to turn it on and turn it off. As this unit is a complex one, it even has a uh, cooling fan on it. And when we turn it on, you can see that it starts working. Now let's connect it to the receiver of the remote control. 
So let's just connect it randomly. So now let's see what happens when we turn it on. Now you can see that the receiver is powered on as well. And then usually you need to push the button to synchronize the receiver with the remote control here. So we push the button, now it starts blinking quickly. And we turn on the remote control. And now the LED light is stable. It means that the receiver has been synchronized with the remote control. I have here my RC car which we're going to fix. And now let's connect the cables. Just any cable. It could be a servo motor on a car or a uh, throttle. So now you hear the sound. It happens when you connect it to an electrical motor and it's trying to figure out what this device is. Let's turn it off. And let's turn it on. You will probably hear some interesting melody. If it happens then the unit will recognize the electrical motor. Now it's doing something and probably it hasn't recognized anything. Now I see that actually this cable was connected to the fourth channel, which is uh, not the correct channel. The third and fourth channel in this receiver is responsible for things like turning the lights on the car on and off. So let's connect this cable here. Let's try again. Okay, now this is the melody that I referred to. So now if we don't know what channel does what, we'll just try to use different buttons on the remote control. For example, forward and backwards movement here. And nothing's happening. And if we use this steering wheel. Okay, so you can see that it works. So now I'm just sending a signal to the steering mechanism. In this RC car, the steering mechanism doesn't use any sensors, it's just an electrical motor that when you turn it in one direction it will turn the wheels. But normally in the steering mechanisms what is used is this kind of a servo motor and I'm not going to show you now how it works. But before that I'll show you where this electronic controller usually send signal to. It should send the signals to the electrical motor that moves the car. So let's see how it happens. So I'm just changing the connections again. I will connect to another electrical motor on the car which moves the wheels, all wheels. It's a four-wheel drive car. Let's turn on the unit. You see here this melody and now if I activate this trigger the wheel should turn. Why it's not turning? Because we still kept the cables in the same channel but if I now move this wheel the car will move. So now let's switch the channel by switching this cable to a different channel. Let's turn off the unit first. Now we switch the channel. The second channel here would be moving the wheels. So let's, let's turn on the unit. So we heard the melody. And you see that the wheels are moving a little bit. It's because this remote control also allows you to adjust the balance of the electric motor. I'll show you how it works in a different video, but let's just show me how now it's gonna work. So this trigger now is responsible for moving the wheels of the car. You see that the wheels are turning in another direction slower. And this is what I was 
referring to you can regulate uh, the electrical motor balance here how the voltage is sent to the motor you have this button here for example and you can adjust for example throttle trim it's called throttle trim and I can adjust it now you see it stopped moving now the wheels have been adjusted and they rotate at the same speed in both directions so now let me show you how the servo motor would work we just plug this servo motor into a first channel here again the red uh, cable is plus and the brown is minus so we plugged it in you heard the sound that the, this servo motor adjusted itself and this part will be moving you may not see it on the video well but you can hear the sound when I move this part it will move a bar which will be connected to the servo motor and that bar would move the steering mechanism on an RC car that uses that kind of steering mechanism so when I talk about this kind of steering mechanisms these are the ones that are used here so this servo motor is placed inside and it's turning left and right moving the wheels so in such cars you would use this servo motor plugged into one of the channels responsible for that kind of a function for this RC car that servo motor wouldn't work because it has a simple mechanism based on springs and the only thing you need to do is to send signal in one or another direction to move this wheels so for that case if one unit here is already controlling the forward and backwards moving movement I will need another electrical speed controller and I actually have one so if I add the second one here I will be able to move the steering mechanism on this car and now the only challenge I have is to connect uh, this unit to the battery but I have only one battery how do I do it? well I prepared a kind of a fork like this so that I can connect them to the battery and to the units let's do the brown on the positive side and the blue as neutral color to make sure we don't get confused and burn our units so using this kind of a fork I was able to connect both units to one battery and of course both will have switches let's turn the first one we heard the melody let's turn on the second one both now are working and we heard the second melody now both units have been connected to the electrical motors correctly and let's see if this car now can be driven let's try the the power trigger first we can see it works and let's turn the steering mechanism yeah and it's working you may have noticed that the steering mechanism is not very responsive sometimes it's because this car is meant to work with 9 volts and I have this battery from 7.4 volts I will connect uh, the battery of 11 volts but this battery got discharged too much and is unbalanced now and I have to uh, get another battery and I'm not able to use it for now but the idea was to show in this video that this is how you can use your imagination to design new things and uh, in the next video I'll show you how we 
actually install all these units on this car and start driving it.